we'll have this discussion. Discussion? What discussion? This is a discussion. Combustion. Coming to you from Denver, Colorado. This is Discussion Combustion Podcast with your hosts, Kevin Batstone and Arthur Raw. Is this 205? Is it 205? Or is it 206? I think, no, I think this it's 205. Is, it's 205. 205. 205 episodes. Yeah. Yes. Of Discussion Combustion. Number 205. Yo. How many hours is that? Oh, man. It, it definitely is over 205 hours for sure. <laughs> well over. I yeah. could I could only hope so. Yeah, definitely over that. Because yeah. if you got it to 205, y'all are y'all are efficient. You know what I mean? Like you got it down like, to a T. We're like down. No, 59 59 minutes. We cut we cut it right there. I'm sorry you had something else to say. We have to shut it down. Right in the middle, like there in the middle. That's okay. I'm done. Thank you. Episode over. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, it's goodbye. like your mic checks yeah. and shit. The all for nothing nation. We shut it down. We got the, the episode. We're done. No, I mean it's been it's been a hell of a journey, man. I mean we've done. Two three hour episodes at times. I think episode one hundred was our longest still to date, outside of Avi Bulo. But just spending a lot of time sitting across some people, getting to know them. It's 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 never gets old. Hell yeah! I don't care how many hundreds go by, how many Bud Lights I drink. It's been a good ride. Cheers to that, and welcome to Cheers. the journey. Cheers, yeah, welcome in. Thank you for having so, me. So one thing I do want to start this episode off with is. Uh, the goals that we talked about last week on the solo episode. Okay. Um, so just quickly, um, I I took Monday off. All right. I still need to take another week off. So so you know, on the last episode, I, I made a promise to myself. Okay. That I was going to do two days a week alcohol free. Okay. Because I, I I'll drink for months on end. Okay. Without taking a break. Yep. So I, I I've that's done. A good, that's a good goal. So so I've done one day this week. I'm planning on doing my second day either Thursday or Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kevin, you created a 10 minute workout goal for you daily. How's that been going? Well, just 10 minutes of bo- uh, you know bonus fitness outside because I'm kind of a physically demanding job. I do a lot of lifting, moving okay. around. But the, the stipulation was I have to do 10 minutes minimum. Outside of that, haven't missed a day yet. Been feeling good. I'm actually sore because I'm not a big fitness guy. Did 30 minutes in the gym last night. Man, I'm feeling pretty good. Good. I'm gonna keep it moving. Good. Yeah, there's something about like that active movement. There's, you know, we in like today's society absolutely have gotten to the convenience of the technology and the workplace oh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's, you know, even though we're in Denver, which is an outdoor like active place, like we're still supposed to move. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like we're still supposed to get up and go do something, right? That's what we were made to do. Hunter gatherers, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, actually movement, like, and I found, I actually have started a routine um, this year of workout just kind of consistently and Mine's a little bit more rigorous. I've been going every day just because I needed it, but um, it's paying off. You know? oh, yeah, yeah. Looking good, man. Yeah. You're looking good. Fresh and fly. So, you know, <laughs> so fresh and so clean. So, and feeling good. That's the most important part. That, that is. Part. How, how yeah. are you feeling about yourself? So, if you were to create a new tangible daily goal for yourself, what would that be? A new tangible daily goal. Ooh, that's hard because then it's like, all right, what 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 obstacle do I want to tackle, or what objective do I want are, to? Go are you after? willing to to like take the challenge? Put put this out there because it's recorded right now, you know. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Sure. Let's see. <laughs> oh, I'm under pressure now. Let's Talk. see. If I had to pick one thing that I would do that is like a daily goal. Can I say brush my teeth or is that, is that too <laughs> gross? I'm just kidding. No, no I do no, that floss, anyway. Yeah. Flossing. Flossing's that's, a good one. Yeah, because that's I, I don't do that daily. Yo. <laughs> Maybe water I didn't picking. even have to come up with that. You just found that. Flossing. Okay. Like to where you bleed until you don't bleed anymore. <laughs> like you floss until you bleed until you don't bleed. Okay, I have to, I have to ask this. Do you think that because, I mean, for years and years and hundreds of years, before toothpaste was invented, uh-huh. before flossing was even a thing, yeah. our teeth were fine, right? That's a good point. So right? here's an interesting question. I've heard this before. Right? Yeah. Is the dental hygiene like, like market? Yes. Just I believe it. a market. It's corrupt. I believe it. No, <laughs> it I, be- I, no I, I smell I what you're corrupt. stepping in. I do. Yeah. I think he's onto something because I've seen like some primal stuff people are talking about. Like exactly what you just said. You know, back then before we had all this fancy stuff, Crest, Colgate, the American Dental Association, all this nonsense right. marketing technique. I'm not saying give up your dental hygiene. Okay. No. I'm not saying that. because It's important, of course. But it's something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think also like, you know, obviously science has advanced as well. We've learned so much down to a molecular level and that sort of stuff. I'm trying to sound smart right now. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things that's like we, we've learned things, but was it necessary in the beginning? I don't know. Mm. This is not a promotion for any kind maybe, of bad dental maybe, hygiene. Maybe it was but. necessary in the beginning, but then as it continued, 
people in power realized that it was also an opportunity for a cash grab. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, be, be, I feel like that about the medical um, industry. I feel that about the dental industry. I feel like a lot of times they recommend things to line their own pockets and it's not necessarily for my best interest. And so like, I, like I have a, I have trust issues with doctors and gotcha. dentists. Gotcha. I, I really do. And I feel like if I'm going in there, it's based upon my own, um, like my own like intuition. How am I feeling? What do I feel actually needs to be done? Right. And, th- and then I'll, I'll tell them, no, I, I appreciate your recommendation, but this is what I want to accomplish today. And I, the sense of disappointment that I've, I've gotten across the table is like, you can, you can, it's palpable. Like, right. They're like upset that they're not upselling you. And I'm right. like, and I'm like, dude, I've been a salesman for over 14 fucking years. Like I can I know te- your tactics. I can like, tell that you're trying to upsell yeah. me on stuff that is going to cost me an arm and a leg. And like, and it's one of those things. It's yeah. almost it's almost as similar as going into like an auto shop, right? Like, oh, I, I need to get my oil changed. Good right. Point. I should get mm-hmm. my teeth cleaned. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, you also have this, this, and this, and they're using big fancy words to overwhelm you, so that you go, oh, okay, how much will that be? You know, yeah. that sort of thing. But I will say this: with the, if it is a market. If it is a scientific advancement that's absolutely true, I'm just really happy that in the morning I can get rid of that stanky breath that I can smell when I roll out of bed. You mm-hmm. know I would what agree I mean? with that. I'm a big mm-hmm. mouthwash fan. I'm pro mouthwash. Thank you. Because that's a quick. That's like a quick. <laughs> yep. You know, especially if you get the good. I'm not talking like you. You know, you don't want to buy like the the Kroger brand. And and you know, don't disrespect Kroger, but you gotta you gotta get some good shit. Totally. Go with that Listerine hitter. Go with like the <laughs> you know, the good stuff. Because I feel like those work a little bit better. That's just my personal experience. Right. You know, to all the gardeners out there, <laughs> do you grow we're jumping, mint? We're jumping all do, around here. I love this. Do you grow this. mint in your garden? Do you ever test that? Like, mint? are people? Yeah. Like, are people using mint? Like, right. Like, do you do you try like? like I mean, is there is a science? The, is there a science behind the potency of the mint like flavor scent? That sort of, the same as like the cannabis industry because you know they went down to a scientific level to get mm. the most potent thing. Does it yeah. does it exist in the same world with mint? Is the big question. Is it? I, they're, they're, that's they were it. busting this thing wide open. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, menthol, mint. That's a kind of a big contributing factor to the to the flavor of these things. Absolutely. Right. It's usually pretty minty, but I talked to a lot of folks like gum. You know, gum is usually either sweet or mint. Right. Mm-hmm. Or that's pretty much it. I mean, I haven't really seen a lot you of get the off- offhanded cinnamon chewers, but cinnamon. they just have problems. Yeah. They, okay. they, yeah. They, they have something else they got to work on. <laughs> but yeah, and the, no, bub- the bubblegum flavored bubblegum is horrible. But what is bubblegum flavored bubblegum? Because that could be a lot of things. Yeah, what is that? Okay, so I, I kind of equate the <laughs> bubblegum flavor. I, I think it came from the medical, like pharmaceutical world because for some reason. The dentist. Yes, that's what I'm saying. We're circling <laughs> it back around here. Do you know what I mean? We're solving so, all the world's problems. Um, yeah, absolutely. But to come back to it, like in, in all honesty, I think flossing is actually a really good one. Yes. I was I was scrounging through. I okay. was like, okay, do I want to make a joke every day? Do I want to take a picture of something I'm appreciative of? Or, but flossing will actually be a good benefit across the board. That's gonna be tough, man. Is that the commitment? Because you know, yeah. you know, I'm gonna run into you, and I'm gonna be like, hey, man, have you uh, been flossing every day? Watch me whip you out know? like one of those and little I'm, notepads, like I'm, one of those. I'm not talking about ones. the dance move, though. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> so I can't I can't use that excuse. Great. But I'm gonna whip out one of those notepads and be like. <clears throat> the first through the 15th, I was dead solid on and I was uh-huh. really good. I skipped a day on the 16th, but that was because I was tired. Uh, that's not a good excuse, but I realized that. And then the 17th through the 18th, I was good to go. So, yeah, it's you'll see. I'll whip out that notepad and be like, yeah, I did it. So uh, the, the whole point of all this is to have a conscious awareness of our habitual patterns, right? Okay. Like what is your daily dedication maybe to yourself or – Maybe what, when you think about this stuff, then you maybe start to realize, like, what am I doing daily that I don't realize that I'm already doing? And is that productive for me? Is is that helping me excel to where I want to grow to? Sure. So and th- it, I, I guess that's the whole mindfulness of it. Right. And there's something about the the repetition and the, the actual um, uh, cadence that you have where you have these activities. And some of them can be very beneficial. Like there are people who meditate every morning. Uh, mm. You know, I've, I've taken part in that and that's helped me for a certain period and that sort of thing. It's a great tool. And then you have things that are, you know, possibly destructive or something that's like relatively toxic. It's like, you know, oh, I, I have to, you know, smoke some weed before I go to bed. Not that Mm. that's a bad thing, but you know, it can become that if it becomes a a certain thing. What I find really interesting is while those structures are really important and that like that repetition and that like habit is really important for consistency. 
I actually kind of like to mix it up. I read a I read a book one time that was kind of like the how to be creative, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest things that they had said about it was it's about changing the habits that you have, but not drastically. So instead of brushing your hand or brushing your hands, brushing your teeth with mm-hmm. your right hand, every couple of, every day, like you know, switch it over to your left. Interesting. And that stimulates a different way of thinking. Hmm. That stimulates a different perspective on that mundane activity. And it's not that you're gonna spend 20 minutes going, oh, what does it really mean to brush my teeth with my left hand, you know what I mean? But it's just kind of the idea of like flipping it out, switching it up, changing it around, you know, that sort of thing. And that's like, that's, I think that that's what's interesting because if you start to look in perspectives that aren't typically in that structured routine, that's when the new ideas kind of come out. That's when you go, oh crap, I saw that for the first time in a different way. You know, and it doesn't take some kind of big trauma or major struggle uh-huh. or like super happy event to like be like, wow, there's a different like perspective I had on this, you know. But um, I don't know. Yeah, there is there are things, you know, for me lately, working out is one of them. Um, definitely. So do you like you do you switch up your workouts then or do you like do the same type of workouts all the time? I tend to do this thing where I kind of get um, a little bit nerdy. Uh, I blame my ADD because I'll be like, oh, that's kind of cool over there, that task right there. I'm going to go try that. Oh, I kind of like this. Now I'm really going to kind of nerd out about it, right, mm-hmm. and learn about it. So uh, to answer your question, I will. I have found that um, as far as like muscle growth and all those sort of things, like in a, in a more consumable way so that I'm not like macro and micro counting and all that kind of stuff, it's like what can I do just very – small changes like that creative thing Uh, i'll do a workout or a certain type of workout for like three weeks and then change it up to a different type of workout so for example weightlifting particular isolation like focusing on those muscle groups uh and structure those out in a week pattern for three weeks and then switch over to hit uh, the high intensity training high intensity interval training thank you I'm stumbling over my words uh, and do that for three weeks and then actually go back to the weight training for three weeks. So like switching that up and just kind of keeping things like on their toes. So there is a certain sense of um, a little bit of like investigation and nerdiness I went into is like, okay, so I want to do split routines and whatever. And I'm using all these terms. It's like a different language at this point it, that I'm learning for me. Mm-hmm. But then eventually I'll be like, you know what? I, I've worked out long enough. It's been like, I don't know, six months, a year or whatever. Hey, over there playing guitar, that's kind of cool. I'm going to go try that. And then yeah. I'll just kind of super dive into that and get super obsessed with that. So, but yeah, I'll just kind of change it up every once in a while, which will be nice. I think it's good to do that, though. It is. Yeah. It's easy to kind of get complacent. And it's like your drive to work. You know, I like to use that analogy. A lot of people just like you pass the same barn, you see the same, you know, Jimmy John's, you see the same thing, you know, on your commute. If you're going to one spot, I mean, I'm a guy that drives around a lot, but gotcha. it's good to switch that up, you know, because complacency can be. That's just that complacent, you know. We got to challenge ourselves. We got to switch it up. Even whether whether it's working out, whether it's trying new things, taking on guitar, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, that's that's why I think it's good to do these kind of challenges. They're refreshing. Yeah, They're refreshing just to switch up a little bit of a lifestyle. That are you able to commit to it though? Because some people struggle with those, you know, dieting, changing the way they Absolutely. eat, whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I I honestly think that like honestly, you know, you think. You think about the idea that comfort and, and that routine, it keeps that consistency. It's comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. It's something that continues to, that you understand, that you know, it's predictable, that sort of thing. So it's almost like I can go through this without being expected to expect anything that is, you know, unexpected. I just used expect three times. That was... It, the sentence made sense. That was unexpected. It, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to add on to it. No, but, no, but, no, but what, what you're talking about is true, though, because um, you get too comfortable in a, in a, a habit sure. or a routine. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, complacency starts knocking at the door mm-hmm. and it's like, hey, like, you know, you've been so comfortable with this so long that maybe you can, you know, calm it down a little bit. Right. So, so it becomes so that's why it's good to like switch things up absolutely like you can't always do things the same way like i I do a lot of intermittent fasting okay but i i do it about five days a week and i don't usually on the weekends i'll like have breakfast okay but sometimes i'll have breakfast like on a wednesday yeah and and and, and, like that's just to like you know confuse my body a little little bit like you have to we've we've uncovered here that it's important to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Totally. The second that you are just so comfortable and cush with your lifestyle that you're like, Oh, it's so routine. It's so easy. Then all of a sudden you've lost a a, a little bit of fulfillment because humans, 
and and this is kind of a downfall as well like we're always looking for the next thing to achieve totally and as as positive as that can be and as important as that is it could also be a downfall totally. because then people forget about what they've already accomplished and yeah. then and then they could get down on themselves because they're like I want to achieve more I'm not uh, obtaining my new goals and they forgot all about all the goals that they already set and accomplished and that's free success energy so I'm just going to take this moment just to talk about success energy and free success energy sure. because everybody has free success energy on tap within their own life and it's all the things that we've already accomplished that we've already achieved that were difficult for us to achieve that we've now forgotten about because we're on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So that's the weekly challenge. Take a second to think about what you've already accomplished in your life and use that energy to help you move forward. So, so it's like almost like this double sided blade because like you have to, you know, be comfortable being uncomfortable, but then also recognize what you've already accomplished to, you know, there's so many layers to so, it. So you're reminding me of this thing that, that I have like found, especially in the past, like five to six years of my life that I've learned. And it was a lesson that I learned really um, intensely, which is balance. Okay. Right. You, you, while, while I agree with you and that complacency can become problematic if you go to that far side of the spectrum, mm -hmm. right? And you, and you remain there, that's a problem, right? And then you have these little peaks of like kind of moving back toward the center when something unexpected happens, your, your tire goes flat or your refrigerator stops working or whatever it is that, you know, normal life brings along. Um, but if you don't actively seek out that unexpected thing, it's going to become numbing, right? Life in my experience is 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 most fulfilled and most um, experienced in balance of the unexpected and the expected, right? You need the consistency, uh -huh. you need the routine, but you also need that excitement of like, what do I do here? Because, and, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier before we started recording, it's like that challenge, that change, that is what is going to make you stronger, more mature, more experienced, more, you know, um, uh, wise, you know, you can really look at these things. And, and I've always had like a soft spot in my heart for like, um, people that were like older than me and not mm -hmm. just a couple of years, but like, like older people. Cause they're at the end, they're, they're at the mastery of what <clears throat> their life gave them. Okay. Right. You know, even though it, it can be grim to say, well, they're going to die soon. Right. But that's not the point that I'm making. The point is, is like, you know, they have experienced so much more. And one of the things I always asked was like, you know, you always want to ask the big questions, how, wh you know, what is success? Mm -hmm. you know, how do you find happiness? It's more about like, how did you balance yourself? Mm -hmm. Like, what were some of those struggles? How did you get through that? And what were some of the things that you had to keep in routine, right? Because that balance is what's really important. If you go one way or the other with anything in life, right? Mm -hmm whether it be drinking, even, you know, working out or something healthy along those lines, like you can if, do too much of it. Absolutely. Yeah. It can become a problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, and it can be something as stupid as like skateboarding after school, right? If yeah. you're going to skateboard after school every day, you're going to have scratched up knees, yeah. right? And those scratched up knees are going to get infected. And by the time you're 30, your knees are going to be shot, right? Uh, I, I don't know why I feel like I, I maybe the, it was through the grapevine. I heard this, but I feel like it's, that's like an Asian type of philosophy is moderation is key mm -hmm. like and you can do anything but just do it in moderation right but like you, you don't go all the way with it all the time with it you don't eat the whole cheesecake when you get a cheesecake yeah you just, eat a slice at a time and it's gonna well, just be even or, better or maybe two two's fine you know right because if you feel like you could do four then two is moderate right yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? two is moderate. well and it's the same thing so here's the thing that i've i've, I've always done is like you know you get the chipotle bowl mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and like sometimes that chipotle is so do, freaking do you dip fresh. the chip in the bowl hell yeah and <laughs> okay also just, an extra tortilla to on the side yeah i mean <laughs> wait wait is there is there another way to do it you could put it in like tortilla reps I guess that's true. I'll have to try that. But like, who doesn't <laughs> dip the chip? Tortilla ribs. Yeah, you got to savor it. We're talking about moderation here. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, tortilla ribs. That's that's hashtag tortilla ribs. There you go. Sponsor us tortilla ribs. I don't know. Uh, um, but yeah, like the Chipotle bowl. This is I call it the Chipotle bowl theory. It's like okay. I know that if I eat the whole thing, 
I know how I'm going to feel afterwards, yes. yeah. right? I'm not going to leave the couch. I will binge watch those next four episodes that are 50 minutes long. Mm-hmm. And then I'll look up and go, shit, it's two in the morning. I got to get up for work tomorrow. And I'm, I'm worried about that. Yeah. But if I stop myself at half that bowl, even mm-hmm. if that bowl is delicious, mm-hmm. and I know that I probably could get away with eating it, right? <laughs> okay. I save that. Not only do I not feel like crap and mm-hmm. I go to bed on time, I also have lunch tomorrow. That's, yeah, that's true. Do you that's know what I'm saying? It. Like, yeah. and if you look at it, it's it's that perspective and it's that balance of like, okay, I know that I know that this the outcome. And sometimes, even though I know I should only eat half that bowl, mm-hmm. I still eat the whole thing I know. because I'm like, we're damned. Fuck it. We're damned. I'm eating it, right? <laughs> this is happening. And it's going to happen sometimes. Right. Maybe sometimes, like, I'm eating this whole damn bowl tonight. Yep. I don't give a fuck. We got chicken al pastor on here. It's going down. <laughs> right. You know, I, and I, I need this. I need it. Tonight, I need this. And it's about knowing it in that moment. <laughs> it's about knowing it in that moment, for sure. And, and every situation might be different. Because, I mean, for me, speaking on the Chipotle bowl theory, I, I'm the same way. I, I want to eat half because I, I specifically purchased this item mm-hmm. to provide me with two meals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a meal now, a, a meal later. Pizza, another great Same example. Thing. Yeah, I, I did that with pizza last night. Well, I, I did the wrong thing and I ate did too the much. Whole thing? It, no, well, more than I knew I should have. <laughs> Over half. And I woke up at four a.m. No joke, to have to shit. <laughs> like that. That's how I know that I ate way too much. Is when I have to wake up beyond my sleep cycle that I normally have to mm-hmm. go poop. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'll say this now. Now, for some weird reason, in this moment, in two months, when you and when you do that again, in that moment at 4 a.m. when you have to wake up to shit, you're going to hear my voice going, moderation, <laughs> moderation. You should have stuck with moderation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn it. I'm yeah. telling you, you're you, going to you're you, going to send me a message here. You just mentally fucked me. <laughs> Sorry. I will live rent free in that head. That's how this will go. Yes. Moderation. Moderation. <laughs> moderation. You should have used moderation. <laughs> we should make sure. You'll remember. In any scenario, anytime we overdo something, you know. Right. But there is nothing worse than waking up to have to do defecation at 4 a.m. <laughs> well, no, because you start getting those weird dreams. Like, you start getting the weird dreams. The and, fever and, dreams. And, 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 like, the shit, like, like the, you get these dreams that you're just like, dude, my bowels are telling me something. And it's, it's, it makes it's, you dream? Yeah, like I have, I have different dreams when I you have should to. should probably see a doctor about that. It's, it's defecation dreams, okay? <laughs> And that sounds like a punk rock album. Th- they're disturbing. Okay. Something Blink One Eighty Two might put out here. Defecation in the next dreams. Years. Yeah. <laughs> After they just got back together. Yeah. It's true. They are back together, yeah. and they're coming to Denver. So I, I, I love how this conver- conversation is flowing. This is amazing. Is it? Great Think about pooping now. Yeah. Great discussion. Combustion. Hey, there's nothing. There is nothing better than a good poop joke or there, fart joke either. Those two are. Or, or just letting her rip tater chip. I mean, yes. <laughs> look, look, I do a lot of dating, and I like to let her rip tater chip on like the first dates because she you has to. to know that it's important. That's gonna be I'm, I'm in regular, the game. Yeah. You know? It's one of those things. Like, yeah, it's natural. Yeah. So yeah. beyond where we're at with this car, wait, so wait, are you, are you, did you make a, a daily dedication to flossing daily? Did that happen? I'm pretty sure you committed to it. Was that a commitment? Right hand, hold on. I will floss daily. How long do I have to do it? This is a life, this is until death. Oh shit, you didn't say it was death. a life commitment. Until death. Oh jeez. No, there's no fads, there's no dieting. It's Damn. it's. is this it's, I mean, the 100 day happy challenge it, No, it's lifestyle changes. Okay. Like, you, make it, you don't have to make it sound so intense so hard. Just, it's just a commitment for the foreseeable future. Yeah, which is the rest of I your life. I will floss every day. Here is my witness. Can I use the sticks instead of the actual? I hate the string. Can I use the, I'll, I'll use the sticks to the, floss every it, day. As long as you're getting string in between your teeth. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even if it's like a stringy like pot roast or something, does that count? A uh, string cheese mozzarella can count. <laughs> I use toothpicks. I'm a toothpick guy. Okay. I, I like toothpicks in certain scenarios. Oh, they're great. I mean, I always have a pack on me. I'll tell you this right now, brother. If you haven't fucked with the mint, the tea tree Ooh. mint toothpicks, I mean, anyone knows me, I've been chewing these some bitches for 10 years. Okay. Not they chewing them, but I usually have one hanging out. You do chew them, actually, too. I do chew them. It used to yeah. gnarl my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend out. <laughs> She'd be like, we got toothpick debris laying around, Kev. You know? <laughs> It happens. You're like, hey, that's just collateral damage, and it's part of the war. It's just, it's just, you know, it is what it is. So yeah, I'll, I'll try to floss. I will, I'll commit to that because you know what? It's healthy for me, and damn it, I haven't put enough effort into it yet. Because who has? Yeah, I mean, look, I agree okay, with that. even if you just give it, because it's a daily thing, mm-hmm. right? So Kev did his daily ten minute uh, physical activity. It's been um, one week. Like daily, Stay daily tuned. is tough, right? Da- daily is tough. So daily, daily flossing. I, I'm doing two days alcohol free out okay. of the week. So, are so you gonna I, be sober on Happy Friday? Yes. Okay. While recording. All right. Yeah, that one's that one's easier because we have to be more buttoned up than this. That's true. You know, so we're, we're kind of having fun in here. But um, 
what I wanted to dive into next was what you do professionally. Yeah. And and you have so much background. We were checking out a lot of the stuff that you do. And it's 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 badass. It is cool. Uh, a lot of video Very editing. Professional. Yeah, a lot of video editing. Mm-hmm. Um, you went to school to be an actor, mm-hmm. so I'm sure that bleeds into what mm-hmm. you're doing. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So I currently work for a company called Pax Eight, and I um, develop content, uh, weekly content, to support our partners and help um, execute that techni- technically. Mm-hmm. So live streaming and um, doing that at a a professional productive uh, production level. So uh, working with different softwares and different technologies to basically send video over the internet in real time. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I do on the daily. That's my bread and butter. Um, my passion, you're right. I, I did go to school. I got my master's in acting uh, from the University of Connecticut. We talked about- UConn. Um, yeah, UConn. Go Huskies. Uh, anyway, because we just won in sports ball and stuff. So uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I went and did that, and that was what I did. I studied that for about 20 years. So I did it in undergrad, and I did it in my grad program. I got accepted uh, to a master's program, and it was kind of hard to say no to the full ride. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, journeyed across the country. I'm originally from Arizona. Um, And, yeah, I would say that, like, you know, I also did a a graphic design, a visual communications with graphic design emphasis. For, For my undergrad, I dual majored. And everything that I've trained in, has kind of led up to this point because you know not only do I work with technology and software and visual communication through the video transfer and the live streaming, but I also um, I also get to help people relax and perform in in, in situations that they don't typically find themselves in. Right? Okay, and so that training kind of came from the the grad program and and learning how to perform under pressure. Really, I think you know if I had to sum it all up, acting is the easiest and the hardest thing to do in the world because it's like, am I doing everything right? You can very fall into that, you know, you can fall into that very deep pit hole of your head and overthinking everything. But at the end of it, you just go. You rehearse enough so that you don't have to think about the lines. You don't have to think about the, the blocking. You don't have to think about the choices. You just feel what's going on and you, you tell the story through who you are. And that can transfer to literally any story, mm-hmm. right? Whether it be, you know, something completely dramatic and high action like, you know, Game of Thrones, right? And you're a character in that. Or you're delivering business concepts and, and new software developments and stuff in corporate video. I mean, the foundations are the foundations. It's just keeping calm and being yourself. Mm. So there's something uh, I've always found fascinating about that and just how people act. Why they fall into those those habits that we've talked about? So why do, they do? Do you those mind? Things. Do you mind uh, sharing? Because we ran into it. We live in the same building, mm-hmm. um, which is awesome. I'm so happy that I've had multiple chances to run into you. Great personality, great energy. It, it always ends and up being at a door, yeah, right? The door like, opens, yes. and we're like, "Hey, hey you know what hey, I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you don't know who you're gonna run into, right? <laughs> right, exactly. You really don't. So, um, yesterday you told me what one of your mentors when, when you were doing acting they they had given you some life advice mm-hmm. and I, I i don't want to butcher it and say it for you but it was actually no please it please was, let's see if it stuck so, so it was profound so it was profound and it was really you know stop trying so hard basically yeah. just just be yourself right and in, in a roundabout way was that not the, no that, that you're, you're absolutely on point and that's kind of like the biggest thing is like we have so many people especially with the the just overwhelming amount of content right and this this kind of goes back to some of my philosophy and the things that i have learned in content development because i was uh, i didn't mention it, i was a twitch streamer between grad school and what i'm doing now and, and how, to, how to create content that kind of shines out and comes out. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it is this. Everyone is always looking in whatever path they are to be unique, right? You wanna be a dentist, you wanna be the most unique dentist, right? You wanna be a scientist, you wanna find the most unique discovery, you wanna be an actor, you wanna be the most unique thing that the people behind the auditioning table are looking at. Mm-hmm. Trying to be unique is not what you do. What you do is you prepare yourself and know what's going on and then just be yourself. Right. Because if you if you just are yourself and you deliver the thing in the proper way, being yourself is unique. Mm. There is no one else like you. So that's powerful. It is. Right. And you don't even have to try. You really, really don't think about walking like interactions when the elevator door opens. Right. Mm. Hey, how's it going? That's a unique interaction. You might not think it's unique because you're saying, hey, which is a word we say all the time. Mm -hmm. But the way that you delivered that, those subtleties, those nuances, that's you. Mm-hmm. 
So stop seeking that unique, stop going above and beyond and overdoing the unique take and just be you. Yeah. Not only will you find that it's going to be more successful, but you're also going to be happier. Yeah. Right? Like, because you're just yourself. I mean, it it sounds simple, you know, when we break it down, but so many folks, I think, do just naturally want to overthink it. Whatever creative thing they're doing, if they're starting a new YouTube channel, if they're doing Instagram reels, whatever it is, I think folks really like to try to turn it up, put the put the heat on a little bit and play mm-hmm. a character and get into things that is not themselves. And you can almost see that as a viewer that it's not authentically themselves. Absolutely. And that takes away from the value of the content. Absolutely. And I there's so there's actually I brought this along because I was trying to tell you my list and I was like, oh, I wrote it down <laughs> okay. so much better. But there's four things I always say when I approach a project. Right. So okay. I'm. I'm a theater person. I'm all about storytelling. I'm also about, like, I'm always about, like, characters that are going through the most intense moments of their life or the most important moments of their life, and it typically creates this this intense story. All right, let's hear this. But what Wait, I so this is the four points of what? This is the four points of um of like what what to do if you're going to create new content in a world that's like surrounding you know to create a quality With overwhelming service. content how Thank to you. create quality content correct yeah okay, the and, four points and these are my four points this is what i have found i gotta find Let's it really it. quick but the big thing is is like because there's so much so basically what i was saying is i come from this theater background which is completely different than the corporate video or the corporate message mm-hmm. background but all of this can apply to anything you do okay. right that's how simple it is but it's also fundamental because when you're creating content, a lot of people do it because they think, I have something to give. Mm-hmm. Turn that statement around and say, well, it's not really turning it around. It's, it's actually looking at it a different perspective. I am in service to the viewer. Okay. So the first thing on my list is, what am I offering to the viewer? What am I giving them? With this content that I have, what am I doing to service the person that's taking the time to watch it? Because they could watch anything else yeah. and there's a lot of other options yeah the second thing and this these are these are relatively simple but you combine these together is how am i presenting my expertise or the info or the service that i am getting in a different way than the other people that are doing it mm-hmm. right what mm-hmm. makes it different is it a technical thing like do i have this like you know buzzer that goes off or whatever right it's something little or is it just the 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 format that it's in is it is it live is it whatever right but like it doesn't have to be huge it just has to be different. And different isn't always unique, mm-hmm. right? There could be something you're stealing from a whole different like category of content and bringing it into this one for the first time. The third one is like, how am I, what am I gonna do to make the viewer return to this content, right? How am I making them feel connected and attached to what I'm doing, right? That's, that goes back to what am I serving them? A lot of this feeds back to the first one. What, what am I doing in service for the viewer? And the fourth one is how am I creating an emotional connection with the viewer? Okay. Because, and especially in this day and age, we have a lot of, um, there's a lot of trouble lately when technology comes up. Technology's created a lot of conveniences for us. You know what I mean? And it's, it's made some of the most natural things harder, like human interaction. Yes. Right? Big time. So you look oh, at- yeah, you're preaching to the choir to the two of us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, so you look at, like, you know, and I'm not hating on the younger generations. I love the younger generations. They're mm. they're awesome, right? But they have a lot of these issues where they don't know how to just talk to people, mm-hmm. yeah. let alone if there's a difficult scenario where they're sitting across from a real human being, how to appropriately present themselves and just be them. Mm-hmm. It's always like, crap, what are they going to do? Or, like, they're looking at me differently. Or, like, it's just, like, because we've been so um, exposed to the ability to communicate in this alternate universe that is social media or internet yeah. connection or video conferencing <clears throat> or, like, COVID kind of slammed us into that. You know, even Major. business nowadays, yeah. right? Like, even business. We don't have, like, it's weird to have boardroom meetings anymore, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You, it's all over Zoom. So, you know, like, what are you doing to emotionally connect your viewers so that they come back, right? And it's harder through digital content because there isn't the energy exchange. Yeah. Us three sitting in this room, we have a good vibe. We feel comfortable, Mm -hmm. right? You know, and it might be that I'm sure you've had guests across here where it's a little bit more stale, right? Or a little bit differently. Maybe it's more dynamic. No, I I will give you some credit because usually around like the 20, 30 minute mark is when people really start to open up, feel comfortable. But we we were just diving right into it. Yeah. And and there's a lot to unpack with what all the the four philosophies that you put out there, and it, it's it's crazy. I mean, not, not to like to echo on one point. 
and not to like call out Kevin and I's friendship a little bit, but like Please do. Please but do. we don't we don't always agree, no. and and so like we Most of the time we, we were having some like uh, meaningful conversations earlier tonight where we were like, well, if you don't understand this, let me re-explain it to you. But we were having it in a res- we were talking in a respectful manner, and that's the thing is it, it's it's difficult to have those type of conversations not look at your phone once like you are dialed in and even if you agree to disagree like as long as you do that respectfully then there's still respect there like we don't have to agree as human beings all the times so we're allowed to have different opinions of course and not always agree well and and that's something that we were talking about in the parking lot last night when we ran into each other and that's the idea of collaboration right and this is one of the things that technology also kind of tends because when disagreements happen, most people, it's the fight or flight, right? Mm-hmm. People will either stay and like fight it out, right? Like I'm going to fight to prove my point or for whatever reason. Or you have the people that are like, I'm out. I'll see you later. That's fine. Take whatever you need. Like blah, blah, blah. Collaboration is something that I personally learned. And that's why you guys have been so successful is because you have two minds on the project that communicate well. And now you're on episode 206, five. 205. 205 is this 205. one. Yeah. There you go. See? Mm-hmm. Full circle, baby. Uh, anyway, back to it. So collaboration is like this idea that it's difficult. You accept the challenge. Mm-hmm. You look for that. Um, and I'll, I'll back this up with this, uh, this story that I had. So I was in – let me just put this in perspective. My grad program was three years long. Mm-hmm. I was with 10 young actors. And for those of you know, who know who young actors are, you know what I'm talking about. We're talking about people that are trying to prove themselves yeah. and be unique and be you know, good performers and perform under pressure, but also don't always respond to you know, critique very mm-hmm. well. And I love my cohort now, but they were some of the hardest people for me to get along with. It was a challenge. We got this, oh, by the way, ten, uh, three years, ten, the same 10 people, 16 hours a day, six days a week. Oh, wow. Damn. That's, that's full send commitment. Talk about a theater troupe. And the amount of weird shit and training we did, bro, I always make this joke. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times, because we were in this room that was like a stage, it had mirrors on one side, but the whole back wall was like these like windows, right? Mm-hmm. And it was just so happened to be right in between the buildings where when class would let out, it was just like a, a, a herd of like students, right? Okay. The amount of times that we were rolling around in like all black, because that was like the required like look, all black tights rolling around making animal noises based on how we felt in that moment as full grown adults okay. with people looking through the window like the hell is going on what's what, going what on with that these cult? theater yeah what is that theater people yeah. hey, or if they had no idea that was the theater building like what is going on in there anyway so the amount of weird training was like and it broke it broke you right like you had to do weird stuff yeah. which means that when you come into a scenario the point was if someone goes all right cool i you know i've i i'll try it Right. It can't be as weird as rolling around on the ground, making animal noises yeah. based on how I feel that day. Yeah. And what, what was your go to animal noise? Uh, it would be like a bear or like a dog <laughs> or like sometimes if I was really tired, it would just be like a whale. Like <laughs> <laughs> You start to find those little things that make it a little bit easier once you do it a lot. Okay. You know, it's like if I hadn't had my coffee or, you know. Uh, any kind of food before I, I'd be like hungry grunting. Like, oh, ah, you know, and <laughs> anyway, anyway, we won't get into the weird stuff that goes on in theater training. But the point about I'm coming back to collaboration is we had this exercise, right? Now, keep in mind, this was year two. Mm-hmm. Year one was us kind of getting our feet together. Everyone's a little bit hesitant in the group that, you know, so we're all kind of trying to appease each other and do the new thing. By like month three or four, we were all like, okay, I'm going to try and like have my space. And then by month eight, it was like, fuck it. We're in this. Let's yeah. do this thing. There's no I'm not going to, I'm not going to hide anything mm-hmm. anymore. This is the person that I am. Year two, we get these things called, they're called auto cores. And it's an old German technique that, um, where you're given a prompt, right? So the prompt would be something along the lines of green bush grows, right? There's no director. No hierarchy, no time limit, no constructs whatsoever. And you get a group of four people or five people. And it's like you have three weeks before you have to perform whatever green bush grows means. Right. Okay. So it's like a, a, an interpretation of what green bush grows. So is, maybe is, is it is it like so. So it could it could be a physical demonstration. It could be 
like a rendi- it, it like a be, reading or rendition uh or yeah like, like it could be multiple things it's art right it's performative art okay. right and every time someone says you know performance art someone in the world cringes but uh it's one of those things that's like it can be whatever the group comes up with okay. with the words green bush grows that's okay. your only directive okay mm-hmm. one you don't get a you don't get a rubric you don't get a guideline. Yeah. You don't have a leader that says, okay, we're going to go with this choice. We're going to go with this choice. So it's not a democracy, right? It is all out war. And that is what collaboration is. Mm. If you have one person in that group that will never, ever, ever compromise, you will be stuck for weeks. Yeah. Right? But here's the thing. As grueling and as terrible and as painful some of the worst memories of my life actually mm-hmm. happened in those group meetings, wow. truly. Because I, you know, I won't get into it, but I had personal things going outside that like definitely were affecting me there. Yeah. And like it just all came to a head because you were with these people trying to make something, right? So it was it was creation without structure in a group's environment. But they always yielded the best performances I've ever ever seen just without even seeing the process because usually we'd be split into two teams of the 10 people and the other group you'd be like oh yeah i bet so and so is like causing problems over Mm -hmm. there right oh yeah i bet she's you know doing whatever she's avoiding this or whatever you know whoever was in that group you could make those assumptions but on the backside, it was some of the best performances i've ever seen and Mm -hmm. and to to wrap it all up and say this that collaboration is often the most difficult process but if you can get Mm -hmm. through it and you can learn how to compromise collaborate Mm -hmm. And, and meet in the middle, right? And it's not about just giving the other person their way. It's about having one idea, like you said, having another idea, like you said, mm-hmm. and whittling that down and grinding it and distilling it and chiseling it and, and refining it into this diamond that's worth just so much more than anything you could come up with on your own. Yeah. Ever. It's true. So that's a great breakdown of it. I mean, at- what I think of is my time when I was in a band. Okay. Right? Because when we talk collaboration, you know, you're collaborating with a lot of people yeah. that have very passionate views about how the song should sound, what the guitar riff should look like, where the solo come in, what the lyrics should say, what they shouldn't say. And so that was a big challenge for me, and I did that before podcasting. So kind of learning some of that collaboration, I definitely feel what you're talking about. It teaches you some skills that you didn't even know were possible. Because totally. I'm a pretty impatient guy. I've gotten better at that in my older age, of hey, course. at least you admit it, right? Like, you can say, I'm, I'm impatient, but I, I can be too. But we all can be. Anyway, sure. continue. No, yeah. no, absolutely. Especially when it comes to something like that, because we all, we're also, it's passion. Right. Like you mentioned, it's passion. I'm over here, he's over there, we've got to come together. Two, three, four different conflicting ideas of how the song should go. Absolutely. The band tested all of us. And, you know, look, the Ridge Runners aren't together anymore, but that's because of COVID. It wasn't so much because of a, you know, disagreement. It only on took a pandemic to break y'all it up. It only took a pandemic. <laughs> Got it. I and understand. then, you know, during that pandemic, that's when, you know, the podcast well, well, really And I would like to just mention this, and I want you to continue your point, but every single one of your band members, including yourself, is, is seeing success in different areas in life right now. Everyone's still getting it. And we're all still friends. Yeah. I mean, there we all still go. hang out. So there, there is that. There's something to be said about that as well. Yes. Right. Anyway, continue. Yeah, no, I just think to, to you know, encapsulate all uh, the, the collaboration piece, um, it's a great skill set for, for folks to, to, to learn, you know, and, and I think, you know, going back to our point of division and social media and Zoom calls and things like that, sure, we, we might be able to get some things done, but it's just not as constructive and it's not as productive as it is sitting around a table, putting pen to paper, exchanging ideas, sure. making eye contact, reading body language, and really figuring out what's going on in the room. I think that that separation and like, you know, and I think I might disagree with you a little bit about productivity because I can find where it can be productive. And that's usually when you go away to your solo work, right? If I have to go get all, you know, X, Y, and Z done in one day, and I know it's going to take me all day, I'll stay at home because no one's going to come knock on my door. Mm -hmm. But if I need, as an extrovert, need that recharge and that sometimes that mental break, having that office is like dire. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I absolutely need that, right? Sure. And there's also something about like just having the exchange. Like if I drop an idea, a facial expression might not change on a camera, but it, and so I won't tell that that's a bad like you know piece of advice or or uh, uh, contribution to the the conversation on a Zoom call. But if I'm in, in person and I see the body shift change, maybe the face doesn't change, but the body shift change, then I go, oh, okay. So it's a, it's a literally a form of communication that's being cut off, right? And while that isn't true, while that's important in some scenarios, again, we're back to balance. I'm telling you, in some scenarios, <laughs> that's really good yeah. and, and can be productive. But I also think that uh, you also need the opposite side of the scale. Do you know what I mean? Sure. So 
And, and it's funny uh, to go back to your collaboration point about the artists and everyone having a different vision of the song. Or I would I would make the analogy all the time. It's amazing that theater ever happens because you have all these different artists in charge of things. Scenic design, right? Lighting, uh, uh, the director, mm -hmm. you know, props. They all have whatever is in their head, their version of the story to tell. And they have to get it together to be performed in real time, right? And so it's always amazing that the end product comes out no matter what it is. And it, it goes to live streaming too. It's the same thing, except it's just through digital format. So. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, and there's there's so many different moving parts that goes into it, uh -huh. right? Like we talked about, you know, the live stream stuff, that adds a different level of it. The Zoom calls, you know, you got people that don't even have their cameras on. <laughs> so you're like, what is this person? They're, like, they're talking and you just see like the silhouette, like the, the guy that's just on the picture. My favorite is the mouth breathers where the icon <laughs> will like kind of light up and they're just like, <sighs> and you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, actually, don't don't tell me. I don't know. I don't want to know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, or they think they're on mute. Right. The video's off. So, so mute, I, not off. I, I do a like lot, I do a lot of trainings and stuff. And, okay. and I'm always like, hey, can we turn our cameras on, please? Like, is this not an industry standard at this company? Like, turn your cameras on. You would hope. But one thing to kind of – and I know we're bouncing around on thought here a little totally. bit. But one thing that just keeps bouncing in my head is – with this digital conversation piece, right? Like everyone is able to communicate digitally mm -hmm. and people are not as equipped to have a conversation like we are now. Sure. Sitting across the table, cell phones down, eye contact happening, totally. body language red. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing about body language is people will pick up on it and read it. Even if you don't know anything about body language, you still pick up on it. You can still read body language. <clears throat> All the podcasts that we do via Zoom, it, it, there's a bit of a disconnect there, and because stale, and there's it's like that, a little there's that delay too. Yeah, nothing is like having somebody sit across the table, and that's just going back to the roots. And sure, there's a lot of technology around us right now, like cameras recording, lights on. You know, we got all this shit happening, but truly, what is happening in this room right now is three people are sitting together sharing some beverages and getting to know each other. And and that is a lost art. Totally. That's a lost art. And that's what's crazy. That's you know, what's crazy. And you know, what's funny is like that where you do see it actually happening is with the older generation above us. You guys are probably around my age. How old are you guys? I'm going to put you on blast here. You two are about the same age okay. and, and I'm, I'm slightly older. Okay. 1989. 89, baby. Let's, let's go. go. And you're... 36. Oh, that's not bad. My best yeah. friend's 36. You're good to go. You're still young, baby. I'm, I'm just slightly older. Let's look, go. look, I, I got, saw I, you I, skipping the other day across the parking lot. So we're good to go. Dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm joyous and happy. Like you can't, you can't <laughs> cap that shit. Yeah, dude. That, yeah. <laughs> I guess the point that I'm saying is like the older generation know that because they didn't grow up with the technology, mm -hmm. but they also have pro they, like, I don't say they have a problem, but it's harder for them to understand what the technical world is. I was having this yeah. conversation with a coworker of like the older generation has an, a harder time understanding that that new language, right? Yeah. Whether it be social media or whether it be networking engineering or whether it be video production, like that's all, they all have their different languages. Mm -hmm. But even basic stuff, like if you click that icon right there, right? Like they have a harder time there. And the new, the younger generation, you know, they, they have only known technology. So they're proficient at that, yeah. right? And I find that the millennials, right? Because we're all millennials. We're in the middle. Yeah. We yeah. actually grew up when that technology was emerging and starting to and, and we we understand the roots of what it was supposed to be, which is about connectivity. That mm -hmm. was the that was the good cause at the beginning of all of this. Because nowadays, you know, think if we if we look at an extreme like an old like Renaissance village, if you liked a certain type of music, even though there was only one kind there, if you liked a certain type of music, it'd be hard to find someone in your village that might like that same type of music. Nowadays, I go. Uh, punk rock screamo. Here's a, here's thousands of people that like the same music I like, right? So it's helped us. Again, we're going back to balance. It's helped us immensely to be able to have a reach. But it's also impaired us because it's taken away, again, some of these things of sitting across from us and feeling what I actually think, too, that's not equated in the body language, the eye contact, the vocal you know, transfer, which is the spiritual energy. Right. And I'm not getting faithful. I'm not getting weird here. I'm not getting all like hippy dippy. But Look, spiritual is not faith. Spiritual. You're is, right. Is you're essence, absolutely right. It's essence. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing like this. If he were to walk through the door one day and he was in a bad mood, doesn't say a word to you. And you turn around, you look at him and you go, what's up, dude? Mm -hmm. What's going on? You know what I mean? That's you feeling that spiritual energy. True. That happens once a week. 
<laughs> there you go. Is it is okay? Here's the question it? now. Yeah, at least. Is it typically <laughs> at the same time? Is there is there a habit in there that might be causing that? I'm difficult. Okay, gotcha. Well, I'm a therapist, so start with your parents. Uh, oh, I love my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest folks could ever ask for. And they're awesome. both together. That's that's rare. Dude, mom that... and dad are coming up almost 50 years of marriage. Wow. And they listen to every episode. So those are goals right there. That's oh. something that will go away. Like, unfortunately, I think because what, like within the uh, in the generations to come, like what do you mean? I believe that I, I think that it's just yeah right you you have a you have I think we're already starting to see it right how many fifty how many fifty year old anniversaries are we uh, like seeing nowadays? Not many, not at all. Not right? many. Le- I would say less than ten percent. And it's because I think that you know the options are there. It's the convenience of of the world getting more populated, us being able to communicate with people f- in further distances. There's an ongoing theme here where I'm kind of bashing technology. I love technology. I no, work but I'm in with it, you. But no, technology I, I is, is bullshit. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. No, no, it, no. So, right. so it's it's good if if you're looking. So here is where you will have my blessings for technology, and I abuse these too. Like I'm sure I'm, I am not a saint in any means for this. I get lost in the interwebs, but if you're using technology to promote positive thought, promote mo- motivation, um, do something that is positive, um, then then go about it. And that's that's using technology to help others. Okay, if, if we're you're, getting back to the what are you what are you yeah, doing in service y- to your y- viewers? Use, use it to help others. Right. But when you're using technology as a means to kill boredom, mm-hmm. you're actually creating. Um, dissatisfaction deeply within your soul because you're getting these small dopamine hits, which does make you feel good for temporarily, a short period of time. But it, it just it, makes me angry. It, it comes and passes it so quickly. So, so, like, so, like you're not. It's not sustainable. So then you're always like. So so and I've repeated this a bunch of times. I'll say it quick. Is um, when I spend one night, I don't have much time to myself. I'm a busy man. Sure. So when I have one night to myself and I end up sitting there looking at Reddit or Instagram, TikTok, that's or, and, and a, that's YouTube, a time and, side. and yeah. YouTube I don't, I don't is playing TikTok. in the background, bro. It's dangerous. And, and I do that for like five hours in yes. a row. Like I honestly, when I put all that down, I feel fuzzy and I'm like, what the fuck am I even doing with my time? Yes. Like if you if you use technology as a means to escape boredom. You will be depressed. Yes, that, that's that's, so, that's so how I feel. This is go. Please, please go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, what I was going to say. So I did um, at the end of my grad program because I, I graduated. Excuse me. Whew, I graduated into COVID. I graduated May of 2020, oh. which is actually how we ended up in Denver because my wife and I were planning on moving to New York City, mm-hmm. um, but we came to Denver. I was playing a lot of video games to kind of escape the idea that we were supposed to have this grand finale. I was going to perform in front of a bunch of agents and, you know, kick off my acting career and blah, blah, blah. Everything was going to be amazing, right? Which was a great thought and a great goal. But that didn't happen. So I was playing a lot of video games because I just gotten a new PC and I was I was trying to distract myself. Thank you. Yeah, I, it's, I, I, it's old I, now. I want to be part of the PC Mass Race so mm-hmm. bad. And Come talk to me. I, I don't mean to interrupt your story. No, you're fine. Please come so talk badly. to me. I, I can help I, you I want to be there. Yeah, we, we can make it happen. Oh, yeah. That's satisfying. For hear. only five measly payments of $1,700 a month. <laughs> <laughs> With all this. Damn it, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I was waiting <laughs> for the my pitch. money. I knew the pitch was coming. <laughs> right, there it is. Um, uh, so I was playing a lot of video games, and she said, why don't you be a Twitch streamer? Why don't yeah. you, if you're going to play video games, do something productive. And I'm like, I've heard of Twitch. Like people are going to pay me to play video games just to watch me. I'm we not watched that... some of those before you came in here. Oh, did night. you? Yeah. Did you see some of the highlights, some goofy stuff? Yeah, like, we did. Yeah. I mean, it was one of those things that was like a great distraction and it was something mm-hmm. to like work towards. And, and it always starts. I, 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 it started for me and it starts for a lot of the friends of mine that have really kind of started um, social media campaigns. Let's call them that. Right. With a positive intention. And it always does drift into that mental illness, right? Of mm. my life becomes about the views, yeah, the subscribers, the numbers, the likes, the, yeah. the, the statistics. And that's a reason why there's like, if you ever watch Twitch, if you're a Twitch watcher, I, I, I always, when I first started, cause I went and researched it first. I was like, okay, what is this thing? What is this website where people play video games and like, yeah. you know, get paid to do so? How do they get paid, right? Yeah, what is that? Um, I was always seeing like uh, uh, charities for mental health, mental health, mental yeah. health, mental health, mental health charity, uh, donation to mental health, blah, 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 blah. I'm doing this 24 hour stream for mental health. Like, I'm like, what is that? 
that's a really that's a really bizarre connection to make when I didn't understand it. Mm. Video games, which is a dopamine hit, and it's totally like either can be some people play video games to be brain dead, like to unwind from the day. Mm-hmm. Some people play video games to feel smart because mm-hmm. it's strategic, right? Like it's completely different. But then I realized it's because it's a social media platform that is all based on for Twitch the number of viewers that you have at the time. That's one of the main statistics that really eat at people in the beginning. Hmm. Because if you don't hit a certain threshold, just like on YouTube, you guys know all about this. If you don't hit a certain threshold, you don't get certain perks or benefits or, you know, searchability options and that sort of thing. Those those checkpoints along the way are are the growth that's the growth that a typical job, if you're working towards that, should come at, at a checkpoint each time, right? But when you get to a, a period of like, wow, I'm in this like kind of valley of just consistent views, it goes back to your, uh, did you call them secret successes, easy successes? Uh, like where if you're not looking at it and saying, I have 20 viewers, yeah. when I want 50, I'm bummed that I have 50, but I have 20 viewers. That's more than a lot of people don't, yeah. right? Like, And not recognizing that, but... The point that I'm making too is like I went into Twitch and I hit that wall. Mm. Things were going really good. I got I got, you know, for a small streamer with no reputation before, I grew pretty quickly in the I think I did it for about two years. Mm-hmm. And I grew pretty quickly and I, I made affiliate relatively fast, which means I could start getting subscribers and stuff like that. And then uh, I got raided uh, by a big streamer who dropped a lot of people in my chat that shot my numbers up, completely changed the game that I was playing, by the way, because it was a totally different game. So I had to learn a new game. But by the end of it, when I was on six hours a day, or I'm sorry, six days a week, like eight plus hours a day playing the same video game, Oh wow! right? That alone will make you miserable. Not to mention when you're looking down and you're, you know, after you get off, you're making content to try to promote yourself mm-hmm. and you're t- trying to different strategies to grow this community. Like it, it eats at your brain because the work that you put in is not being repaid how you think it should be or how you, how you see the success of it. Right. And so I think that that's a really big thing in content creators that they have to remember If it starts as a passion project, it always has to stay a passion project. Mm -hmm. Even if it becomes so wildly successful that it's your your lifestyle, Mm -hmm. it is a passion project. And the other big thing is, if you get to a point where that first positive like intention to do it goes away and you've forgotten why you started, Mm -hmm. and it's more about either making the money or making the views, That is, you're starting to not live the lifestyle itself, which means it's not going to be authentic in the content. You Mm -hmm. become a fraud, right? If you're promoting, uh, you know, how do I, how do I put this? If if I'm going to, if I'm going to become a baker and I'm going to live stream baking, right? And I don't know anything about baking when I start, but I just kind of always wanted to learn how to bake, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you start making cakes and then by the end of it, you're a year down the road, you're like, here's the cake. Like this is whatever, but you don't bake cakes outside of the stream. You're like fucking eat the cake, take the, eat right. the pictures. Kev, I, I know you got some thoughts going on with this. I mean, look, I think that we're hitting on a lot of good points. Yeah. You know, and it really, uh, the, the biggest one that stands out is, is the passion project piece. Because if you don't have that, you're not doing it for the right reasons. And, you, you know, going back to your four points, you know, engaging viewers, keeping them coming back, all those kind of things. Those are all great strategies. But we got to do it because we, we can't not do it. We love it. We love what we do. We love to create. And right. I think... When you get away from it, even in bands, I talk to a lot of musicians, bass players, drummers, whatever, that end up in a band just to be in a band, just but they don't like the music band. that they're playing. Right. And it's like, well, then why are you doing it? Why are you here? It's not adding value. I mean, sure, you get to show off. You get to play a rock star on the stage, things like that. But, man, I think that that, that point is what I really take away from this episode is do it for the passion. Do it because you love it. Not for somebody else. We're not trying to impress people. And, and the other thing I would take away, too, is not paying attention to the numbers. Sure, it's important. This is a business. Sure. It's yeah, yeah, a yeah. business. Eventually, if, you, have to, you, have to, you have to track that stuff, but it can't be the sole reason. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think that's, that's the biggest problem that we see now with modern creators, whether it's Twitch, TikTok, I'm not well-versed in, or Twitch, for that matter. That's fine. Um, you know, just... They're all the same. It's all the it's, same it's thing. It's all the same algorithm. Just in a different format. Yep. Subscribers, well, you well, name it. All you got to say about the numbers is the numbers could get the fuck out of here because it's all about the experience to me at this point. And and, I, and that's why you're still happy to do this, well, right? Well, it, yes. it excites you well, to sit down I mean, couch. I mean, just to sit across the table from you and, and see your body language and how excited you are to talk and like – this is like this the for us I mean I can I can speak for Kevin cuz he's my work wife um, <laughs> and, and you guys make a lovely couple hopefully 50 years comes for oh, both of you baby 
I'm with you until the end. <laughs> until death do us pass. <laughs> but but that's the thing is like is like like I live in the present because the future could happen. The past already did. Right now is all that matters. And to sit across the table and like have these type of conversations where like I'm smiling, I'm like, oh shit, that's actually very insightful. And to have the honor to do that with so many talented people every single week, like that's what keeps me coming back. And that's what life should be about. Right. Life should not be about the big goals. Like what do you like is, is as important as it is as as important as it is to work towards something big, you need to enjoy the process of getting there, the journey. And like, yeah, that is a cliche. But as a as a man in his mid thirties, I'll tell you the cliches are true. And There's a reason why they exist. It's about the journey. Yeah. And and like even if I made zero dollars doing this, and fortunately, like we've we've been fortunate. That's great. You, you know, but like even if I made zero dollars doing, I would still show up. You know, because it it, it feel it 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 fills up my tank. And that that's that's exactly it right there. You're still passionate about it. It's still mm-hmm. something you love and enjoy to do. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, for me, I always make the joke, anything, because I did the Twitch thing for a long time. And there were, like, by the end of it, before I got, and actually the Twitch led into the live streaming in the business world that I did, uh, that I do now. I worked for a company that streamed concerts, like, globally. Mm. So, you know, I ended up getting those numbers that I was always dreaming of, but just not in that format, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. that was a goal that even though I set that and I felt like I wasn't achieving it, it hit it, but just not in the way that I thought it was going to, Yeah. right? But that being said, I was miserable towards the end of of Twitch because anything can become a job, even the thing that you love, unless you let it not be. That was a double negative. If you don't let the thing that you love become the job and you're always approaching it, not for the success of what it could possibly offer, but because you need it, Mm -hmm. because that's who you are, that will always shine through no matter what format you're sitting in. Mm -hmm. Live streaming, photos, uh, in-person conversations. If you love what you're doing and you're passionate about talking, it, people feel that energy and that spirit. They do. And if it gets to a point as a content creator that you're going, this isn't worth it. It's not giving me what I desire. It's not giving me the things that I thought that I should be having at this point. You're not living that passion anymore. Mm. And therefore, it's not going to come out through the content because it's not something that you love, right? Yeah. And that that is the idea of someone saying like, "Oh, this person's content just kind of fell off." So so why why is why is it difficult to maintain passion and um and like authenticity? Like I I feel like work. I I feel like that's something that's difficult to maintain is passion and authenticity. Work. Work. Yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, it goes back to something that we circle back to earlier, the complacency, the not wanting to, you know, really make the commitment to it. Sure, it's fun for a while. Great. A lot of people have brilliant minds and they have great ideas. But are they going to consistently show up, show out, and do what it takes to really get and reap the benefits of what it is? Totally. And are they going to be willing to once they – because systems are important, Right. We create those systems so that we can get more productive and more efficient at what we're doing. But are they willing to break the system? Are they willing to kill the darlings to change it up? Are they willing to kind of... Kill the darlings? Have you ever heard that term? Kill the darlings? It's dark. I've never heard this term. (laughs) I love this. Yes. Okay. So what is killing the darlings? Have you heard this, Kev? No, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Okay. So (laughs) so killing the darlings is it comes from the creative background, right? I heard it first in theater, but I've also heard it in graphic design. I've heard it in filmmaking. I've heard it like kind of all over the point. So I think it originates, correct me if I'm wrong, internet. uh, I think it originates from the creative world somewhere in like the different mediums. Maybe it's painting. But it's this idea of this beautiful idea that makes sense in your head. You're going to transcribe it. You're going to make it the most amazing thing. And it's something that you are so in love with that you're not willing to get rid of it. It is your darling theory, yeah. concept, uh, uh, artistic delivery. It's your darling because it's the one thing okay. that you're holding on to. At some point, there may come a point when that doesn't fit in with what the art is actually leading you to create. Because you never approach an art. You approach an art piece with an idea that you're willing to toss. Mm. And so the okay. idea of killing the darlings is I have to let go of the things that I, I was so certain that I was going to hold on to of what this project was going to be. And I have to let the project take me where it's telling me. Cru- crucial mindset. Yes. Th- that's all I have to say to that. Yeah. 
Killing and the it, Darlings. Like, I, I've been through that without knowing Killing the Darlings, but, like, I've killed my Darlings a hundred times over, and they're still trying to bloom, and I'm, like, stomping the dirt. Right, because, it, because that, and that's, I think, where the Darlings in the darkest part of it comes, is it's your baby. Yeah. Right? It's your it's your personal creative it, idea. You have to let, that's pride. You have to let go of the pride mm-hmm. of holding on to what you thought would be successful when really something else is obtainable and a different path that you didn't know existed. And you have to trust you have to trust the art to t- to show you that, right? Mm-hmm. It's this idea of uh, um, when you have an object that's a prop or you have a, um, a a construct that you have to create this project in or or an architect has a plot that it has to design or mm-hmm. they have to design their house on. You <clears> don't <throat> go, "Okay, how can I force something into this square?" Yeah. You go to this plot you look at the land, you look at the view on the land, and you let the plot tell you what to do. Yes. Which seems a little esoteric, but if you go stand on that like plot mm-hmm. and turn around and go, that's the best view, that's where the master bedroom should be pointing, you'll understand what I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. If you start an art piece, right? Let's, let's say a painting, and you're like, I'm gonna start with this background color. And you're like, ooh, the canvas itself kind of warped in this weird way. That gave me a different idea. I'm going to follow that. And then Mm -hmm. that might take you a completely different direction. It's the idea of seeing those things and speaking that language. You have to have like an open mind enough to be receptive to under like and and it's what what I thought was the right way might not have been. It often never is. And you need to have that mentality to be able to break into that. It often never is what Mm -hmm. you originally think it's going to be, unless you're already approaching something that's established that you can make better. Yeah. If you're starting from scratch, it is often never what you envision the first time you sit down at that piece of paper. And that's a great feeling. Yeah. I think it's a great feeling. A lot of people are like, this didn't go the way I wanted it to. I don't like this. It's making me feel uneasy. No, but when you can roll with the punches and you can, you know, adapt with what's going on, because we're always going to be throwing challenges, right? Totally. You know, that, that's what I take away from that. Like, we, we, this is how it should be built, but now we're throwing this obstacle. Now we're, how are we going to respond to it? What are we going to do? What's the right. creative idea? Or here? this thing came up, or this, or, and it's a different language. So it's something that I always encourage people like, you're not going to be a pro at learning French the minute you open a French textbook, mm-hmm. right? Also, you have analogy. to be around it. You have to be in it. You have to be spoken to and speaking to other people mm-hmm. in order to really develop that skill of that language. So if if you wanted to start something of trying to learn how this creative process in your own medium, in your own passion or whatever it is, go and sit on it and struggle through it. Mm-hmm. Because it'll be like, uh, what's the whole term? A eureka? Like the, the it'll be just like a, an enlightening moment. It almost yeah. feels spiritual because your heart will jump when you understand that's the direction I need to go with this because mm-hmm. it's telling me that direction. Yeah. Kind of an aha moment. Totally. So good segue. We like to ask every single guest that comes on the episodes, that comes on the program, mm-hmm. um, if you could give one piece of advice to humanity so everyone could be better off tomorrow. And I feel like you've thrown a lot of gems out there tonight. But if you could give one piece of advice, what would that be? Uh, I'm going through a couple of different ones and I'm trying to think of like the best one here, but I think the one that keeps popping up is like, you know, communication is hard. Don't make judgments based on, you know, it's the old, don't judge a book by its cover. The idea of walking down the street and seeing someone and going, Ooh, I don't know about that person or Ooh, that person looks like they have everything that they've ever wanted. You don't know. Don't assume just question, right? Investigate, be open. Mm. It's all, it's, it's more about like connection is more about, you know, tell me, tell me what's up. Like you're having a tough day or like, you're really excited. What's got you so excited. Right. Or like, you know, it seems like you're a little off is something bugging you. It's like, ask more questions. Don't judge. Don't assume just communicate with each other and take the time to actually listen. Uh That's like four of them. I just put four of them in there. So it's all wrapped up in one. I mean, yeah. Great pieces of advice for sure. That's my, that's, and I think that that's just like, you know, personally with what's going on in my life right now, which that's kind of what I'm noticing is like, there's a lot of miscommunication across the board all the time when, and people don't know how to communicate, right? Yeah. And even if they know how to communicate, there's something called miscommunication. Uh-huh. So, you know, it's, it's always like benefit of the doubt and don't judge. You know what I mean? Good advice for sure. So, yeah, and I think we really kind of dove into what that looks like a little bit. You know, like you said, miscommunication, misinterpretation, misrepresentation. Totally. All comes through 
you know, means of a third party communication source, whether that's Instagram, whether whatever it is. So to his point, I agree. You see someone on the street having a hard time, whatever. Oh, you know, immediately the mind goes to, oh, I already have this figured out. But do you really? You don't know what's going on. Right. You know, you really don't. So I like that, man. That Always resonates be curious. well. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things. And of course, you know, you have the social media realm, which is actually, in, in my opinion, and this might be a little esoteric, is it, it's a different reality at this point. It is an alternate reality. It is. It is absolutely evolved into the, something. This shit that, ain't real. Like with, with social media, until somebody is sitting live action in front of me and I get to know somebody, I don't fucking trust it. I mean, the the AI generated facial stuff, like what, <laughs> Yo. like like what, like on Reddit, like there yeah. was so many dudes that were paying for this AI generated females nudes and shit. It's ridiculous. Like it was, she wasn't even fucking real, bro. And and like or the, like even the, the deep, deep fakes, fakes that are going yes. in politics yeah, and that's stuff exactly, like that. Scary. Yeah, yeah, terrifying. So, so it's like, any, but also like incredible. Right. It, well, it's in, it's incredible technology wise. Right, but, but it's, it's terrifying. It, it, like massive far, security concern. Yeah, as far as to the influence that false media has on the populace is higher than it's ever been. And so, word of the wise out there, like, uh, don't trust anything that you see online. A- every single article is satire. You in, have in my to opinion. separate. You have to it's separate. It's all satire. Right? And it's all biased in some mm. form. And typically, if you really deep dive, no matter what content it is on the internet, it's trying to get you to buy something. Well, yeah. And, well, and also to tie into your point for humanity, though, like, look, don't prejudge even the articles that you read. Don't prejudge all this shit that's thrown in our faces. That's it's out there to to, you know, pull Quick a bait. string. Yeah, it's it's out there to get a reaction out of you. It has a specific so, so it has like, a specific purpose. And, yeah. and, and until you meet somebody live action, like sitting across the table from you, like I've met you several times in passing. But to actually sit here with you, like I, I have a, a flavor of your essence now. You know, and and, and vice and vice versa. versa. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so it's like you don't know that until you actually sit down with people and take and, the time. Yeah. So, so uh, I don't know. There, there's so many other areas we can go with that. Oh yeah, but, we can. But great advice for humanity. It's so true. Like, stop with the prejudgment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Also, a, stop a, trying to sell a false version yeah. of yourself, right? Yeah. Like again, the alternate reality. It's like the avatars, right? Like mm-hmm. it's uh, Ready Player One, or like I just watched Gamer again recently. That's a good is, movie. Yeah, it's surprisingly right. It's good. I remember looking at it and being like, "This is like a B film," but you know, Gerard Butler's in it. I'm going to give this a watch. Trip Holy, this is great, right? Like, anyway, <laughs> but there's like this alternate universe that, yeah, you can be whatever you want, but also recognize that's not real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those people aren't real, right? Like, they are real people. Most of them aren't, actually, right? Like, even the viewers, there's view bots and there's like accounts. There's people that make multiple accounts, you know? Oh, yeah. It's like that is a different space than this. And this is what we have right now. Mm-hmm. This is the life that you are given. Yes, you can dabble in that if that gives you joy, if that's something that, you know, uh, brings like fulfillment or it makes you feel nice to like post the nice pictures. And it's, you know, everyone uses it for a different like scenario, but it's it's to have that separation and to recognize I still have to work in the real world and I still have to live here Mm -hmm. on a day to day. And if you're miserable here and happy here, what are you really gaining? Mm. Going back to your balance point. Right. No, I mean, it's it's true. It's so true. You know, I think a lot of folks seek dopamine from different areas. Oh, absolutely. From right. drugs to social media to you name Snowboarding. I mean, like, I'm into it. Yeah, yeah of course. Let's go. Yeah, so the balance piece, I think, is my big takeaway from this episode because it is important. Yeah. Because it's so easy to get caught up in, in being a workaholic, being a, you know, non-holic, if you will, just a right. lazy fuck, whatever it is. <laughs> the balance has to exist on both sides of the scale. Right. You know, it's so true. It, it really is. And I think that's something that, that the viewers and listeners should, should kind of think about a little bit is that balance. You know, that's something I've been thinking about a lot as, as these, these minutes have ticked off. And this has been a, a, a tremendous episode. But um, a lot to unpack here. A lot to unpack. We got into some deep stuff, gentlemen. It's it's a beautiful conversation. And and so to all, I'm, I'm going to look at the, the camera for this one. To all the young listeners out there, people who are lost in social media, let's break past those barriers. Let's actually try to get a phone number, make a phone call. Let's get to know these people that we think we know. Let's actually make some real connections. And honestly, like real connections to the point where you you don't agree with these people all the time, but you still respect them because ultimately that's what it all comes down to. 
This world is full of people who all have their place. On, everyone has their place on this planet. Totally. Everyone deserves to have their own opinion. And that's their right as a human being. And just because we disagree doesn't mean that we have to dispute. We, can, we can disagree respectfully and, 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 and build something bigger from it. And often you will find that if you, if you get past that ego of, like not, <clears throat> of, of solely sticking to what you think is right – the outcome and the product of whatever you're collaborating on and building on is going to be miles better than anything you ever even imagined Mm. because you're taking the best parts of everybody's ideas and creating that diamond. And the more people that are involved in, granted, you don't want to do like a whole town full of people collaborating, but even when you do, you see city councils and stuff, right? But like the more people in the group, the more minds that approach the problem from different perspectives, different lifestyles, different worldviews, the more amazing the outcome. So true. So true. Pleasure having you in. Thank you so much for having um, me. Let's do one more cheers, cheers. over this. Yeah, absolutely. It's so good to sit down Thank and you. talk with you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks for coming down for a, a visit. Absolutely. Thanks, Bud Light, of course. Uh, and before we get out of here, you know, let's let's get through all the plugs. Everything's going to be in the show notes down below. Where do the folks get in touch with Rob? So, yeah, you can find me on Instagram uh, at it was Robbie. Uh, and then I also have my Twitch stream, uh, Instagram still up at that one guy. Uh, it's spelt a little weird. I'm sure you can see it in the description as well. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of my main social media. Uh, I have some other things, but yeah, go to the Instagram. Perfect, Perfect. Perfect. Short and sweet. Like it. Um, look, life is a journey. Experience it to the fullest. Get uncomfortable, get comfortable being uncomfortable That is where you will experience life. The past is to be learned from. The future is to be told. The present is all we have. Live in the now. Please be good to yourselves. You know you deserve it. And stand up for what you believe in. We'll cut it right there, man. Hey, thanks, fellas. Good up, bro. Yeah, man. That's great. Cheers. Cheers to that. Yes.